Ghost Stories is the 2018 adaptation of the play of the same name by its creators, Andy Nyman and Jeremy Dyson. This movie is such a fun treat, perfect for Halloween, and one of my favourite British horrors of recent years. Dyson is one of the League of Gentlemen, the comedy troupe with Mark Gatiss and Inside Number 9, Steve Pemberton and Reese Shearsmith. The League were famous for their mixture of absurdist comedy and horror, and that style is abundant in Ghost Stories. The plot centres around Nyman's character, Philip Goodman, a paranormal sceptic who is tasked by his idol, the reclusive Charles Cameron, to research three cases that are supposedly unsolved so we've got an anthology of sorts with recurring themes and motifs. The first tale is about Tony Matthews, a xenophobic night's watchman who is haunted by the ghost of a lonely child. But this encounter has a positive effect on him and causes him to visit his daughter who has locked in syndrome. Paul Whitehouse, who's predominantly known as a comedic actor in the UK, is great as Tony, giving a surprisingly realistic performance. I feel like I've met a thousand Tonys in a pub somewhere. The second follows Simon, played by the always great Alex Lawther, a disturbed teenager who's become a shut-in after accidentally running over a demon in the woods. His encounter has left him a power paranoid wreck, obsessed with the occult. Thirdly, Philip meets Mike Priddle, a financier who, while awaiting the birth of his child, is harassed by a poltergeist, before seeing the ghost of his wife, who has died in childbirth. After recounting his tale, Mike shoots himself in front of Philip. Shaken, Philip returns to Cameron, believing this to be an elaborate ruse, but Cameron pulls off a mask to reveal Mike, as the world around them starts to collapse. Philip suddenly relives a childhood memory, where he witnessed his bullies trick another child into a tunnel, where he had an asthma attack and died. Philip was too scared to go in after him. The guilt over his inaction and the estrangement from his abusive father causes Philip to attempt suicide in his car. All the events we have seen have been concocted by Philip's mind, an amalgamation of his surroundings and memories. Also, the needle drop at the end is perfect. Like at the end of American Werewolf, where the main character dies naked in an alleyway after going on a rampage as a werewolf, almost killing Jenny Agatha, they cut to Blue Moon by the Marcells. Ghost Stories pays a little homage to that by cutting to Monster Mash. I love an upbeat song at the end of a horror movie. They help us digest everything we just saw and remember that it's just people playing dress up. Martin Freeman is fantastic in this, he should really be in more horrors. He plays the second mic with a taunting glee, you can tell he's having so much fun. Now, the revelation of the ending was very divisive amongst viewers, and I can see why. Now, I do have a preference for mysteries to be grounded in some sort of reality, and the film even gives us an explanation like that. This whole thing's a stupid, shitty hoax to get you back on TV. It's a way of usurping me, you are a lonely, jealous, bitter old man, and that's the truth. But I think Ghost Stories is the best example of a it was all a dream type film, as all the pieces are clearly established. Philip's go-to explanation for unbelievable events are hallucinations or some kind of coping mechanism. The brain sees what it wants to see, they're your words, Charles. Philip just didn't realise that also included himself. All the characters are the hospital staff who work on Philip's ward. Simon is a nurse, Mike is a doctor, and Tony a cleaner. Cameron is played by Martin Freeman as well, as Dr. Mike often refers to his old professor, Charlie Cameron. Well, as my old professor, Charlie Cameron, used to say, that's just of his dreams are sweet. Next room, laddie, next room. On the ward, there's a picture of a road through a forest, like in Simon's story. The time is always 3.45, as that's when Philip attempted suicide. The doll in the corner is also in the baby's crib, and is a doll of the ghost girl. There's the recurring motif of distant relationships with parents, the fingers in someone's mouth that are really a breathing tube. The numbers from the tunnel appear throughout the film, as do the bullies and the hooded figure. We even hear Mike the Doctor on Tony's radio. It's just one of those things, lights are on and nobody's home. Just one of those things. Lights are on, there's nobody home. There are so many connections and hints throughout that makes this a really satisfying rewatch. And even if the conclusion doesn't quite come together for you, the preceding tales are spooky, funny, creative, and told with a reverence for the genre. After all, it's not about the answers, it's about the story.